Aloha! Film Revision is back for one of our year-long discussions on films from 1983. This is our 16th of 25 discussions, and today's film is one of many uh, successful adaptations or updates of the classic George Bernard Shaw play Pygmalion. Uh, of course, everybody's familiar with the Broadway production or the film version of My Fair Lady, but also in recent years we've had modernizations of that same story uh, with films like She's All That, or even to some degree 1990's Pretty Woman. The 1983 version of that story is the British comedy directed by Lewis Gilbert, Educating Rita, starring Michael Caine and Julie Walters. And to discuss that film with us today, we have actor Angela Rauscher from Northern New Jersey, and Kaveh Harabi, who works in finance, and who's visiting us all the way from Munich, Germany. Kaveh, thanks for making the trip. Thank you for having so, me. So, why don't we start with you? It was a little slow, but you know, I thought it was you know a um, a story about you know a woman that was really struggling to learn more about herself and her life. Hence and the title. I really connected with that story. Angela, opening thoughts. Loved it. Loved the acting. The story is great. Old classic, of course, as you said. Um, and it's got an unpredictable ending. This movie blew me away, and I was amazed at how emotionally engaged I was in this film. I desperately rooted for them to get together, and I'm oh, not a yeah. sentimentalist type. So that's the first but thing I really want to talk about. You were completely let down. I know. Which, which is, but I mean, which like, is, I think that's is, the best I, part about it. You're on you the edge of your so? seat, going kiss, kiss. They always tease you. They're always about to kiss, and you want to just slap them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it was a tragedy though? Because you know, you know how they talked about the tragedy I do. being being Macbeth. When they talked about Macbeth. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that this movie was a tragedy? Um, no. No? I think the growth of Rita makes it not a tragedy. The growth of Rita, yeah. Which is, which is a good segue <laughs> into my next topic. <laughs> and, that is, and that is feminism. Did you feel like Rita is a feminist hero? I guess she is because you know her husband is, and, and that's the other funny part. I thought the men in this movie were really kind of different and that her husband was feeling like his clock was ticking and uh, that he needed to get her pregnant. I like and, Denny. And, and she, no, I like Denny yeah. too. And, and she just, needed to break away from that because she was trying to discover something about herself. I sort of see her as a postmodern type of feminist. It's not about, you know, equal rights per se. It's about, you know, independence instead of equality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And it was more of a class thing than a feminist thing, I thought, because mm. the, the feminism... That's my, that was my next thing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's Another great! Segue. I love segues! It's great! <laughs> because, you know, the feminism aspect of it, there were, there were other women in the, in the movie that had a lot of the things Rita had, and she was just trying to bring them to realize what they had, like yeah. her roommate. So I agree, that's why I'm being a bit quiet, because I didn't see really a feminist connection as such. Do you feel like it's, a, it's a condemnation of the disparity between the classes in, in England at the time? There's still a big class difference in England. They would say that there is no middle class. I mean, it's, it's the working class or the upper class. I feel like there's a third party in, to some degree, this whole academic world. Mm. Like, do, are, are they considered upper class? They're very much like the movie. I mean, if you go to any of the but universities, but they're not they're not like bourgeois as much as they are academic. It's almost like to me, it's a different thing. Let's let's focus on Frank. He does not feel like an upper class. But it wasn't so much about that. It was just that he didn't appreciate the things he had in his life and mm. the things he had, and it was more about the experiences he was exposed to. It did highlight the differences between the classes, but I also I also thought it highlighted the differences between. You know, people who had something in their life and didn't realize it, and the people that had nothing in their life and, and realized and, it and, did and, something about and it. wanted oh. it and didn't do anything about it or wanted. And that's to why do I something. feel like she's a feminist hero too, but particularly in be. that lower class world. She was expected to make babies. That was her role in this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lower class British Liverpoolian, mm -hmm. Pudlian, Liverpoolian, Liverpoolian society. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like that was her role, and, and she saw something more. She she said, that I agree with that. She, you know, there was something else she wanted to do, and so, she fought for it, yeah. and she got it. I mean, whereas her mother, then contemporaries, or even even her her roommate, the new roommate uh, yeah. that she had, gave up. She wasn't fighting. Mm -hmm. She had it, and she she just gave up the fight. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rita was really fighting for it, and yeah, I would agree. She is a heroine. Oh, I won that one! <laughs> yeah, you won! <laughs> That's part of what makes Julie Walters' performance such a terrific one. And it, yeah. the, she has several journeys. Like, it's like a double arc. Because, like, once she takes that journey becoming educated, she conforms too much mm -hmm. and then learns that she can be herself and right. still utilize this education. Right. Uh, it's sort of like what you're saying. And, but, I mean, like, the way Walters 
manufactures that from within, I think, is extraordinary. Angela, do you, how do you feel? Oh, Perf completely. I mean, you saw what she was fighting for every step of the way, and it's uh, her transformations were amazing. And you know, you you saw it, especially in you know, even in that scene where she shows up at his party with her bottle of wine and then you know turns to leave. I mean, that was just it was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You felt for her. There are a couple things that you know sort of irked me about it. Um, one sort of related to what you were saying, that is Michael Caine. I uh, feel like he's overrated, and I actually feel like it's a bad performance. I feel like he's a weak link. I, you know, yeah, I do too. Maybe that's really what I, I was getting at. You know, I, I don't I, think I it's written, like the character is bad, but I mm. feel like he overplays his hand. I well, agree. And I think that his character could have more of a, more of a spark in his personality. But you're talking about character stuff, and I'm thinking, like, I think as an actor, surface acting, uh, you know, and maybe, maybe that's what created your emotional reaction to him. Yeah, he, uh, didn't, he didn't give that attraction or that gleam to, to into his character that yeah. there's something and more you, But here. I can there's see it in light. the writing. Like, I can see yeah, it there. And that's why I feel I like that, that's really on Michael Caine more than it is the character as written. The scenes that didn't go well is, is when she was just so well read. There was a transition, like, all of a sudden she went to France and she's got it. She's got it down. Oh, and she's more of a, yeah, and she's more of an expert than he is in some cases. So do, do you think there needed to be more scenes in the transition of that character? You know what I think they're needed? Back to My Fair Lady, I think they needed a plain in Spain scene. They're a breakthrough scene where she finally sees things a new way and that starts on her path. And then you can start a montage mm -hmm. of her getting better and better and better. For closing thoughts, we're going to rank the film on a scale of 1 to 10 and then a short summation of why. I'd say a 9. And why? Because I loved it and I thought it was brilliant and I did love the performances, but some, you're right, something was missing from Michael Caine, which is so unusual because he's amazing. Um, I think Michael Caine overall is highly overrated, but that's that's another discussion for another about day. This is my <laughs> rating. You're, right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. So yeah, so that's why I'm I'm not giving it a ten, but I absolutely loved the film. Coming. 6.5, I would say. <laughs> I don't know you could do so that. So precise, he's in finance. <laughs> um, I thought Michael Caine's performance was weak. I thought the movie had, you know, like we were talking about those transition periods where it didn't really, it wasn't really plausible. Overall, the, the ending of the movie didn't have that spark of hope that I was looking for in the characters and it left you hanging off a cliff. I'm, I'm also going to say a nine. I think the watermark for any film is how uh, emotionally involved you are and engaged. And I, the way I found myself rooting for these characters, which is a very abnormal thing for me to do, I'm very detached normally, because I am a sort of a cynical bastard. Um, <laughs> I was amazed at how much I wanted them to be together and how much I was engaged in their story, and, and particularly her uh, character arc. I didn't want them to be together in the end. I thought the relationship would have been <laughs> pathetic. They would have separated after three months if they got together. I don't know. I think no way. I disagree. I think they she was into the long haul. Each other. She was just what he needed, and mm -hmm. vice versa. Totally. Yeah. I think she was just what he needed, but he definitely wasn't what she needed. So thanks again to Angela and Kave uh, for coming out this week. Uh, the escape is on this week on Real Thirteen, as John Sturges has his third film to be featured on Real Thirteen Classics with Steve McQueen and an all-star cast as they attempt to tunnel their way out of a German POW camp in The Great Escape. Uh, followed by the short that you will have chosen on real13.org. And then Real 13 Indies maintains its political theme for the month of October as they bring you the Australian film The Independent, about a regular citizen who tries to run for office and then is confronted with the true face of politics, whether it be in Australia, America, or any other democratic country. One of the Real 13 Indies from August was a film called The Cult of Sincerity. And as many of you already may know, I sat down with the filmmakers of The Cult of Sincerity and we had a 10-part discussion on how they made their cinematic dream a reality. So definitely you want to check that out on the Real 13 Facebook fan page. You can see all those videos and uh, feel free to comment on them and to become a fan of Real 13 on Facebook. Film Revision in the meantime will be back next week um, with a look at one of the most popular films of 1983, John Badham's War Games. Until then.